So of course what happened was in those days, uh, the Indians are all success oriented, right? Like the Chinese, right? So all they want to have their children to be doctors or engineers or something like that. So when I would tell my relatives, they would say, oh, what are you doing, you know, young man? I would say, I'm doing physics. I would say, oh, we are so sorry, you didn't make it to engineering. I said, <laughs> what can you say? Because effectively, if you did not manage to get admission in engineering, then you ended up doing physics degree just so that you can get at least some, some college degree, right? <laughs> sure. Uh, a couple of things. One is, I started by asking the question, why is it that so many people die of lack of drinking water, safe drinking water, right? Even when we take it for granted. I mean, we wash our cars with it, we water our lawns with drinking water, we flush our toilets with drinking water. Okay? So for us, it's like, what, what is this? Mm -hmm. So it turns out that most of the deaths from diarrheal diseases, from bad drinking water, are rural, in smaller communities. And that means the technology must maintain its affordability as it scales down. Mm -hmm. Most water disinfection technologies are highly scale sensitive. Their costs are highly scale sensitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while you can chlorinate water for half a US cent per, per metric ton of water for a whole city. By the time you try to chlorinate water for a village of a thousand people, you can't afford it. Those guys can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Because it requires a presence of a trained operator all the time. Mm -hmm. You can't afford a salary of a trained operator when they, when they themselves have only a maybe fourth degree, a fourth uh, grade education. Mm -hmm. So, so then that led to trying to locate technologies which are robust, remain low cost at small scale, mm -hmm. and that will survive under extremely harsh operating conditions in the developing countries, where you, you should be prepared not to be able to find a screwdriver for 10 miles, right? Or, and so on. Uh -huh. So that led to this invention uh, which uses ultraviolet light to destroy the DNA of pathogens with a very large margin of safety in the sense of providing so much more dose uh, to have a 300% margin of safety in terms of what is really needed to kill pathogens. But unlike chlorine, ultraviolet light doesn't have any adverse effects from overdosing. Chlorine, if you overdose, water will turn toxic, you right, can't drink right. it. With UV light, you can overdose it a hundred times and nothing will happen. That's amazing. So all these things lined up nicely. And then I looked at why is it that UV disinfection has failed in the past in the field. And it's failed in the field because the classic design, which is to take the lamp, put it coaxially inside a quartz tube and immerse it in water. And, and have the whole thing inside a, a, a concentric steel cylinder and, and the water passes through the annular cavity. It's an excellent, good, reliable, good chemical engineering design. Every time it leads to fouling of the quartz tube. So that means you... And I looked at companies that have fought that fouling. <coughs> the, the, the good ones, which have fought... The, the bad ones just let it go. They say, you, you figure it out, right? The good ones have a moving circular brush that that sweeps the sweeps the quartz tube. Okay? I didn't want any moving parts. Right. Because then you get into the scaling problem. Moving, exactly. Moving parts? Oh my god. Then you got bearings and you got motors. <laughs> All these things begin requiring greasing on and on and on. You are going down into the Rube Goldberg path that <laughs> So, uh, so you either do this mechanical device or you have automatic feed of harsh chemicals, corrosive harsh chemicals that will flush and kill the algae and, and remove the scale.
Mm. But that gets complicated too because it requires timers and injection pumps and so on. Mm. So the clean solution was to take the lamp out of the water so that there is no physical surface on which any fouling can happen. So this design, which is, looking back, it looks stupidly simple. It is, I guess. <laughs> That's the nice thing. All these things, in retrospect, look stupidly obvious. <laughs> <laughs> That's true of most good ideas. So the lamp is in air, and there is an open surface of water beneath it. So water just flows under the lamp, there is nothing, no solid surface to foul. Right. If there is any deposits or dunking, it is at the bottom of the water, which can't come between the lamp and the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's it. In 12 seconds, you have given 300% more UV energy dose than what is needed to kill 10 to the 5 E. coli per deciliter down to less than one, that means non-detect on, on a sample of one deciliter.